Thank you, and thank you for your testimony. I appreciate it. I want to join my colleagues in honoring John Dingle and our Mile High Memorial yesterday for him, and we'll, we'll all be together with uh, Debbie Dingle, our colleague, and her family tomorrow. Um, I just want to move on to um, the Section 1332 uh, and direct my questions, if I could, to Professor Keith. There's clear statutory directive in Section 1332 that states must provide comprehensible and affordable coverage to a comparable number of residents under the ACA. But unfortunately, last fall, the Trump administration issued new guidance, and I'm afraid that that's going to hurt people with pre-existing conditions, like my dear friend Bodie, who's a young, young man uh, with spinal muscular atrophy in my district, necessitating a wheelchair to get around. Uh, thanks to the ACA, there's no longer broad-based exclusions to wheelchairs or to all the other affordable health care that helps Bodie lead a fulfilling life. Uh, but for Americans like Bodhi, this concerns me in this Trump guidance because it runs counter to the statutory directive. So last week I introduced H.R. 986, the Protecting Americans with Pre-Existing Conditions Act, to nullify the new guidance. I've heard from my Republican colleagues this morning that they want to protect Americans with pre-existing conditions, and I would encourage them to sign on to my bill. If I could, Professor Keith, I'd like to... Uh, suggest a quick lightning round about my concerns of these uh, short-term limited duration insurance products so that Americans will understand our concerns. If you could just respond, um, under these plans, are, are insurers allowed to refuse to offer a policy to an individual with a pre-existing condition? Yes, they are. And are insurers allowed to exclude coverage for pre-existing conditions? Yes. And are insurers allowed to charge higher monthly premiums based on health status and factors such as age and gender? That is correct. And are insurers allowed to impose annual or lifetime dollar limits on care? Yes. And are insurers allowed to opt not to uncover entire categories of benefits? Here I'm thinking of mental health services, prescription drugs, or maternity care. That is correct. And are insurers, even in states like Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, West Virginia, that have been so hard hit by this opioid epidemic, allowed to offer policies that do not include coverage for substance abuse treatment? That is correct. And are insurance allowed to retroactively cancel coverage once care is needed? Yes, that has been one of the biggest abuses and something that the Affordable Care Act prohibited. And are insurers allowed to impose much higher out-of-pocket costs than under the Affordable Care Act? That's correct. And so I would simply ask you or Commissioner Altman, if you could, um, we've heard from Ms. Turner about her opinion that these plans protect consumers and bring down costs, are there alternatives, uh, waivers such as reinsurance products that could bring down costs for consumers? Absolutely, there are other mechanisms out there and reinsurance is a great example. Uh, that can lower costs for those to help afford premiums without putting people in the position of having to choose between uh, no coverage or substandard coverage like these short-term plans provide. So it's your professional opinion that rather than this list that we've uh, gone through this morning of ways that insurance companies are choosing to make higher Profits, and I believe you've testified the profits are as high as 50% of every premium dollar? Actually, even there are some even higher than that. The two largest carriers with 80% of the market do spend less than 50 cents of every premium dollar on care. The rest is some administrative cost and the rest profit. Which is shocking to the American people. Rather than all that premium dollar going into profit while families are put at risk, you believe there's an alternative that this committee could consider 
uh, to focus on reinsurance or risk pools. I do, so that no one has to choose between their health and their financial well-being. Thank you. My time is up, but I very much appreciate that. Opinion. You're welcome. I yield back.